Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillah. Ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulillah. Ve ala alihi ve sahabeti ve men velah. Ve sellem selime kathira amma ba'd. So this is another episode uh, in refuting doubts and the misconceptions of the Christian missionaries and the Islamophobes and those who are the uh, enemies of Islam. As for today, inshallah ta'ala, our subject will be concerning Allah's statement in Surah Al-Qasas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned وَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَاهًا آخَرْ لَا إِلَاهَ إِلَّا هُ كُلُّ شَيْءٍ هَالِكْ إِلَّا وَجْهَهُ that the meaning of the verse that uh, and invoke not any of other ilah God along with Allah there is no one worthy of worship except him except him except Allah everything will perish save his face his his decision and to him you all shall be returned so the meaning of the verse everything except his face is different open upon is different upon so the scholars differ concerning this, the meaning of the verse, everything will perish except his face. So some of them said, its meaning is that everything will perish except him, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And others said that its meaning is, everything will perish except that by which his face was sought over righteous deeds. As Imam al-Tabari, may Allah have mercy upon him mentioned, who died in the year 310 Hijri. But before that, just let us lay down some foundations and the principles concerning Allah's names and attributes. From the belief of the Salafiyun, the Orthodox Muslims, that when you affirm Allah's names and attributes, we don't resemble Allah to his creation. So we affirm what Allah has affirmed for himself. And what the Messenger of Allah so has affirmed for Allah. Because logic dictates, no one knows about Allah better than himself subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one knows about Allah from the creation better than his prophets and messengers alayhim salatu wassalam likewise we negate what Allah has negated about himself and what the messenger of Allah sallam, has negated about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but when we affirm Allah's name's attributes we have a criteria what is the criteria? بِغَيْرِ تَمْثِيلِ وَلَا تَعْطِيلِ وَلَا تَكِيفِ Naam, that without ولا تشبيه نعم without uh, distorting uh, or تحريف sorry بغير تمثيل ولا تحريف ولا تكييف ولا تعطيل so without distorting the meaning without resembling Allah to his creation without saying how because why that's from the knowledge of the unseen Allah told us about his name's attributes but he never told us how Naam, and there is nothing like look like look like into Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we speak about Allah's name's attributes, always we bear in mind Allah's statement. There is nothing like unto him and is the all hearing, the all seeing. Likewise, we bear in mind Allah's statement and we remember Allah's statement. Do you know anyone that's similar to him? Meaning there's nothing similar to Allah. Likewise, we remember Allah's statement. Uh, and there is nothing like unto him. There is nothing comparable to him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah already gave us a yardstick, a criteria. When we speak about, about him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, always when we say Allah has a face, we know that Allah's face is not like our faces or any of the creation. Because in Arabic language, we say, for example, the phone has a face. The phone has a back. Da. Tarl hatif, pojl hatif. But the phone's face is not like your face. And it's not the, the elephant's face. Naam. Likewise, Arabic language, we say, Yadul bab. Naam. The, the, the door's handle, not, not like my hand. Or the clock's hand. Walillahi al mathul a'ala. And the best example, the perfect example, belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's just among the creation, we can see that we share the same name, but it's not the same in, uh, in essence. Naam. So there is nothing like unto him. So when we understand that, that clearly can refute the doubts and the lies and the twisting or the twist of the Christian missionaries and their tactics and their evil deception. So the meaning, so Imam Tabari mentioned that they differ concerning what does it mean except his face. 
and we explain why the differ. And in reality, Ibn Uthaymin mentioned both explanation can be combined, so there is no contradiction between the two. Um, so here it says everything except his face will perish, meaning except him, and wajhahu is the accusative sense to signify exception, as if he said except him. Ata said its meaning is that everything will perish except by which his face is sought, and every action done for the sake of, uh, of others besides him will perish. So meaning that, because why? To, to, to make you understand. So some scholars explain the verse here, except his face, based upon just this part of the, faith, uh, the, the verse, except his face. Everything will perish except his face. So they said meaning that nothing will be will remain except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in Arabic language, the face means what? Mean the face and the one who possesses the face. So that includes the essence. Naam. As the Shiva Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned here, he mentioned based on the position of those who are of the opinion that it is permissible to combine the two meaning, we say it is possible that we consider the ayah with the two meaning, since that there is no contradiction between them. So it is uh, explained in both ways. As a result, it will be said, everything will vanish except his, the mighty and sublime face and every deed will be in vain save what is done uh, seeking the, for the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to either of the two understanding the ayah contains evidence for the affirmation of the face for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so for example to make it clearer when you say that's what we say back home I'm in our countries Arabic language said don't hate this person for the face of his brother doesn't mean just his face mean for his brother not but you are affirming the face as well but affirming the essence too so and this is a problem again, <laughs> as I say, when an Imam Ahmed, because what we have to understand, these Christian missionaries are going back to try to use the doubt of the Mu'tazila and the Jahmite and the Mu'tazilite and the, and the Maturidis and the Asha'ir without understanding the original problem. Because the one who started these problems is someone who he never knew the Arabic language. Now, the, when the when uh, Abdul Aziz ibn Hilkinani debated Bishr ibn Ghiyath al marwisi one of the uh, callers and uh, one of the heads of this deviation, uh, changing the meaning of uh, the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and distorting and negating, he said to him, the reason you are coming to this conclusion, negating Allah's name's attributes or distorting the meaning, because he never understood the Arabic language. And it's exactly what this pirate from the Christian missionaries and other than other than them are repeating. Uh, now, so Abba bin Abi Rabah Abba mentioned said its meaning is that everything will perish except that which except that by which his face is sought, and every action done for the sake of others besides him will perish except what was for him. So he, because Allah said in the verse, "Wala tadhu ma Allah ila akhar," do not call upon anyone besides Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Now. La ilaha illahu. There is no one worthy of worship except Him. So make your actions sincerely to Him. So everything that are done for other than Allah's sake, or for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then will be perished. What will remain except the deeds that was done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's what we have mentioned about Hata. It's been narrated by Imam Tabarani, may Allah have mercy upon him. Again, to remind my brothers and my sisters, Allah bless you all, this article has been written by our Ustad Abu Ayyad Amjad Rafiq. May Allah preserve him. Uh, so, uh, again, the some scholars mention, as for his saying, everything except his face will perish. Now, so everything will perish except his face. He informs that he is the remaining, everlasting one, the ever living, self, uh, the one who. Uh, is not in need of his creation. Uh, everything is in need of him. Has he used the expression of face to refer to the essence of his being? Mean except him, Mujahid. And the Thawri said, everything except his face will perish except that, except that 
by which his face is sought. And this is saying does not negate the first saying because this explanation informs that all these are futile except those by which the face of Allah, the exalted, are sought from the righteous deeds that conform, conform with the legislation. As for the first saying then, it necessitates that all essence are temporal, temporal uh, and perishing except the essence of the exalted and sublime. For he is uh, for, for the first and the last who is before everything and after everything that is from Ibn Kathir. May Allah have mercy upon him. So the both meaning go in line with each other as Ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy upon him, said when you read the tafsir, there is no, there is two types of tafsir. There is ikhtilaf tanawwa or ikhtilaf tadad. There is ikhtilaf which is uh, some, they translate as there is the expression which contradicts one another, but there is some expression which is called contradistinction. It's different, it's, it's, it, 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 because it has a vast meaning. Naam, so there's no contradiction between the two. Naam, for example, to make it clear, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, hold unto the robe of Allah, all of you. Some scholars mentioned it means the book of Allah. Some scholars mentioned mean following the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Some scholars mentioned mean following the companions. That is no contradiction. Because by following the Quran, you have to follow the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. By following the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have to follow the companions. By following the companions, you have to follow Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. By following Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have to follow the Quran. So, uh, now, so Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala mentioned and do not invoke alongside Allah another God. Rather, be sincere to Allah and you worship, because there is no one worthy of worship in truth except Him. Hence, there is no one that deserves to be given devotion and to be loved and worshipped except Allah. We're talking about the love here, we're talking about the worship love, not the natural love that you love your parents and so on. Now, the perfect, the everlasting, everything will perish except his face. So when everything besides him will perish and disappear, then worshipping that which is perishing and futile is, not, uh, is the most extreme of uh, falsehood and corruption. That is from Imam Sa'di, may Allah have mercy upon him. Now, so if you're gonna worship, if you're gonna worship, or you do rushed actions to something that will perish, something is false, then will not benefit you in the hereafter. The only thing that will benefit you in the hereafter, the thing that you did for the for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the thing that you did to seek Allah's face, Subhanahu wa Taala. Then the Abu Iyad, may Allah preserve, he mentioned the face of Allah is an attribute of His essence which follows the general principle of the absence of likeness tamthil, to his creation, similar to the rest of the attributes, such as seeing, hearing, knowledge, will, power, life, mercy, and so on. Now, the Christians and the Jews, they believe Allah sees everything. So if they say you are resembling Allah to his creation, we say to them, but you see and God see. So because we say God see and you see, therefore we are resembling Allah to his creation, we say no, no, no. The way God see is so perfect, not like us. So okay, use the same criteria for the rest of the attribute of the Creator. Use the same criteria for the rest of the attributes of the Creator. Naam. Allah has a face, not like our face. Naam. Because there is nothing look like unto Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, naam. So the, fr the phrase Face of Allah, which Allah is used in the Quran to refer to sincerity of action, that which is done to attain the pleasure of Allah, to attain paradise, the ultimate, uh, ultimate reward thereafter, which is to see the face of Allah, referred to 652 or 76 nine by uh, nine by way of example. Hence, in this verse in Surah Al-Qasas, layers of meaning, layers of meaning have been incorporated through the use of this word in face of Allah. It indicates sincerity of action, ikhlas, which is the essence of the word of Islam, the kalima, to worship none but Allah and to be sincere in that worship, seeking nothing by his pleasure. Now, so the face of Allah is used what? To be sincerely, to worship Allah sincerely, meaning to seek Allah's pleasure, 
meaning to meaning paradise, meaning also to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to see his face subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is the best reward to uh, the biggest pleasure in paradise is to see your Lord, your creator. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take our soul, our souls upon the Quran and the Sunnah. The, because uh, the Christian missionaries try to use this by because you know they cannot establish with the logical argument, with the reasonable, uh, reasonable argument, with the rational argument that Jesus be God, but he died according to them, but he had to go to the toilet and someone had to take care of him, someone had to breastfeed him, someone had to change his nappy. So, so they cannot establish logically. So, what they're looking to look for any excuse that we can find in Islam to. to to uh, cover our uh, 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 paganism. No, Abdullah, Quran and Sunnah are free. Quran and authentic Sunnah are free from paganism and free from liking Allah to his creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why when we speak about Allah's name, uh, his names and attributes, we have the yardstick, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us in the Quran, that there is nothing like unto him. There is nothing similar to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the end of this uh, article and uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless and to reward our uh, Ustad Abu Iyad Amjad Rafiq and to make us and him firm upon this deen and to take our souls upon Islam and the Sunnah and advice to my brothers and my sisters and to those who give da'wah out there make sure you learn Aqeedah, study the correct Aqeedah learn the Manajah Salafi, learn the, the Aqeedah Al-Wasriya and uh, of course with the expansion of the scrolls of Sunnah and uh, likewise there's a nice book has been written uh, concerning this uh, uh, subject uh, of the, uh, the names attributes by Imam Ibn Uthaymeen may Allah have mercy upon him book called Al-Qawaid Al-Muthla and Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Azzati Amma Yasifun Wa Salaamu Na Al-Mursaleen Wa Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa Salaatu Wa Salaamu Na Nabiyina Muhammad وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وسلم سليما كثيرا